There might be some nuances based on the environment, but this is going to be what you'll be doing. Okay, so not a big deal. But let's talk about it a little bit so that we can have some understanding of what it is. Right? What is risk assessment in general? You know, the definition is simple. It's just a systematic and structured process of evaluating potential risk or the likelihood and impact of an event that could negatively impact our business. As simple as that, right? If you remember the video we shared right now, it was showing us, you know, there was a war going on and the generals had some issues and their overall um, leader said, listen, did we envisage this risk? Was a risk assessment done? Right. The same thing if you have a leak on your roof, for example, the first thing you're thinking is, did we buy insurance? Right. If you are in Florida, you think and say, do I have flood insurance? Right. Because that is your own internal risk assessment. If you are thinking of increasing your potential earning every year, you're thinking, am I learning a new skill? So you're doing a risk assessment of yourself. Am I getting rusty? Can I be potentially laid off without having the skill to move on? Those are risk assessment internally within your own ecosystem, right? So it's the same concept, but now at a larger scale. That's all we're doing. So, and the fundamentals are the same. It doesn't matter. I don't care where you where, where you're doing. It. It's the same thing, you know. And let me ask you to do something. I like to do this. Very important. If you don't mind, I want everybody to chat real quick and type something for me real quick. We love to do this a lot. If you don't mind, can we do that together real quick? Can you just type? And if you master these three things, you're going to be so cool, really. Number one, let's put likelihood. Can we type real quick, everybody? If you don't mind, can we just type together? Can we say likelihood of occurrence? Can we say likelihood? Can we all type it? Likelihood of occurrence. All right. Let me give an example. I live in the great state of Texas. Woohoo! Love Texas, right? But guess what, ladies and gentlemen? You know, um, even though I live in Texas, it's hard for you to tell me in Texas, there will probably be, at the moment, there will probably be earthquake, right? Because um, we are not prone to earthquake, right? So it's fair to say if I'm in Texas, probably we would not have the risk of earthquake. However, I could say the likelihood of it happening is probably low. Let's say something happened, you know, for some weird reason, the world just changed, the whole universe collapsed. Now I can start thinking maybe we could have earthquake. But generally speaking, the likelihood of earthquake happening in Texas is low. Let me take it a step further. Can we type this together, everybody? What is the likelihood of earthquake happening in California? Let me see what you guys think. Is it high, medium, low? Let's see. Let's brainstorm together real quick. Excellent. Now, you can see that the dynamic has changed. I've changed the variable. I've said, OK, let's go to California. What about in Tokyo, Japan, right? You guys will agree it's high, right? Because they are more prone to earthquake. So that is the key thing there, likelihood of occurrence. All right, let's take it a step further, everybody. Let's take it a step further. Let's take it a step further. What about, let's say, if there was, let's think together, ladies and gentlemen, let's take it a step further. What about if I tell you, what is the impact of an earthquake in the state of California? Can you guys think, let's think together. What about, let's think, can we type it again, impact? If I ask you, what is the impact of an earthquake happening? Yeah, I, I impact. Absolutely, I agree with you. It's I impact because why is it I? It's gonna impact revenue, lives, safety. It's a lot of variables that can really take us into a very precarious situation in California, right? I impact. So mostly we're gonna think from a risk and say, what is the impact? What is the likelihood? These are decisions people make every day at large enterprise, guaranteed. I'll tell you that. Now, you might not be making it most of the time, but I bet you your director level, sometimes your senior manager level upwards are constantly reviewing and making these decisions, okay? So let's hold those two thoughts in our hands. Those will be things. Now, somebody's asking me, what about interview? Now. In our program, our focus is really on one thing. Our program is targeted on just one thing, nothing else. Can we all type the word J-O-B? Can we type J-O-B? J-O-B real quick. J-O-B. That's all I care about, really. Everything else, I respect you. You like certification. You like to read. You like to, God bless you. We love you for doing that. But we're just not useful there for you. 
Our focus is strictly things we can do day to day and make us much more effective as leaders in our organization. When you leave this program in the next 45 minutes, I guarantee you one thing, you feel confident to say, if somebody asks you to volunteer, you know, um, to do a risk assessment, you would volunteer yourself because you got it. It's not a big deal, it's not rocket science. And you guys will see it in a bit. You feel good and get out of there and say, hey, you know what, I can do a risk assessment. And you must say it in an interview. You must say it and say, I've performed risk assessment. Use our scenario today for your risk assessment. So, all right, no big deal. Let's go to the next one. Significance of risk assessment. I think we've overdrawn this already. It's important, number one. Remember everybody, no matter how um, financially stable you are as a company, and I'm talking about the likes of Tesla, Google, um, Facebook, um, Johnson & Johnson, Coca-Cola, Saudi Aramco, Shell, Exxon, whatever the big corporation in the world is, nobody has unlimited resources. So because of that, risk assessment is crucial for us to know how to effectively allocate our resources in any case. Or else, you're going to be running at risk of you know, your competition overtaking you, for sure, because they will be using effective processes in managing their own business. So it's so critical and important for us um, at any point in time, okay? Risk identification, let's talk about this. And today we're gonna to participate in this, but let me just talk about it a little bit so that you can understand what this concept is all about. Now, in a few minutes, you guys will be part of the risk identification. This is just the process of identifying and documenting potential risk that can impact our organization. As simple as that, don't overthink it, nothing more than that. I mean, let me give a good example and you guys, I'm sure you can relate with it. Let me ask you, let's let's chat together. Let's even forget cyber for a second and let's just brainstorm together, right? Let me ask you, what is the risk? Let's come home. What is the risk of a five-year-old child walking to school alone? Can we type it real quick, everybody? Let's think together. What's the risk? Let's type it. Somebody said kidnapping. Yes, accident, abduction. Yes, it's I. It's it's not a joke, right? Yeah. So do, that is what we do when we do risk identification. Now let me tell you one, guys. Uh, one thing very important, ladies and gentlemen. It's a trick I, I want to make sure you know, so that because some of you, your life, your world will take you there. Maybe this week, your boss volunteers you to do a risk assessment, whatever it is, and this would happen to you. Um, you know, when you do risk assessment, it will be like you and I talking. It gets very heated, to be honest, because our views will be different. In a few minutes, you guys will work together as a team. It would happen. We'll start challenging each other. Don't get personal. It's part of the process. Okay, it's okay. It's healthy. The reason is because our thoughts are different. Our um, leverage it, be a good facilitator. What I typically do is if I do a risk assessment, I would have scored my risk assessment myself before I share it so that I would just ask you to validate it or agree or disagree with me. That's okay. But if you make it open-ended where people are challenging because our thinking will be so different, it will be so different. Somebody else will say, well, you know, adoption risk is not a lot. It's not going to be there because we have cameras everywhere, you know, and we have solid policies everywhere. So there's no adoption risk. Okay. Um, I, I don't agree, but somebody else will say that to you. <laughs> But I'm just giving you the perspective. This is going to be the real life. This is going to be what we'll be dealing with all the time. But it's okay still. So how do we do risk identification? Mostly brainstorming, scenario analysis, SWOT analysis. And for those of us that don't know what the SWOT is, you know, um, this is just mostly a way we kind of check for, you know, um, strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats, you know, in general. But these are ways we really get into identify risk. But to be honest, Many of these risks are things you and I already have a feel of if you're working in any organization. And you guys will see today when we talk about our case um, scenario in a bit, okay? All right, let's go to the next one, risk analysis. Now, th th remember again, um, once you identify the risk, right, you need to do analysis, right? And that's why I think about the potential impact on the business, the likelihood of this risk happening. You know, um, for example, you can't tell me let me give you a good example. Somebody can ask you, okay, let me ask everybody. So what is the likelihood of, God forbid, an aircraft landing in the middle of a village in a remote place in Asia, for example? 
you know, a place that has no airports, right? They have no airport, they have no airstrip. Can, can we answer that? What do you think is the potential? Very low, I agree. Yeah, because think about it, there's no airport, it's a remote village, nobody goes there. But guess what, ladies and gentlemen, it's still, it, it can still happen. The chances are low, but it can still happen. Under what circumstance? What about, God forbid, if um, there was a, let's say, drug dealers using the place as a way to kind of ship their drugs or hijack, somebody said hijacking. The potential of that happening is very low, but it's a possibility, right? But don't get caught up in those kind of conversations because it would drain your risk analysis uh, assessments project. Somebody said emergency. Yes, emergency threat. Yes, emergency could be. So it can happen, but the likelihood of it happening is virtually remote. But I can't say it in, with a straight face, it can never happen, right? I mean, somebody said mechanical problem. Yes. So it means it could happen. The next question is the likelihood of happening, happening is quite remote, but it could happen. So use your judgment to determine those factors. All right. So that's what risk analysis is talking about. All right, let's go. Some best practices in terms of identifying and analyzing risk. And that's why today you'll be part of that best practice. We're going to collaborate. We're going to go through it thoroughly. We look at documentation to prove it. We go to regular review to make sure we are constantly doing risk assessment. Let me ask you a tricky question, potential interview question. If somebody asks you, how frequent do you do risk assessment? Can somebody tell me some of the best practice? Is it weekly, yearly, monthly? Can we type? Tell me. How do you think, how would you answer that? In an interview, somebody said, how often do you do week, uh, risk assessment? <laughs> somebody said daily. Oh, I love you. You're awesome, man. Somebody said weekly, quarterly, <laughs> hourly. <laughs> I love. Okay, let's pause, folks. All right. I know you guys are smart cookies. You want it daily, hourly. But listen, if you do daily, you're going to kill the your staff because that is a full-time job of it. So we can't do ideally. Most environment will not do daily risk assessment. It's a lot of work. Depends on the environment. I would say best practice at the minimum, let us do risk assessment yearly, right? At the minimum. Now, like I said, sometimes it doesn't work that way. Depends on the environment. It will determine the kind of how much the frequency is. But at the minimum, once a year, I would agree with that, okay? I would say that's my baseline, right? At the minimum, I need once a year. But some environment, for example, if you are working in the um, critical infrastructure in the US, these are our grid system, our water network, our transportation, shipping line, nuclear stations, every one of this critical infrastructure, risk assessment might be needed more often, right? Because we need to constantly evaluate the risk, right? Fair point. But, I can't mandate daily risk assessment. That will kill, you know, that's crazy, right? <laughs> However, there's, there's going to be risk triggers, things we bake into the process to make risk triggers, whereby if there's a risk, we see the trigger and we can follow up with it at that point in time, okay? But that's a good interview question. If somebody asks you, just say, well, at the minimum, there should be a yearly risk assessment done. So if you say that, people will understand you get it from a point of, it depends on the scenario. I don't want to use a blanket statement to say, every quarter. Because think about it, ladies and gentlemen, remember again, at the end of the day, it is still a business, right? It is still a business. So if you are telling me to be doing risk assessment every quarter or every week, it means I have to dedicate resource to do it. That is incurring cost for me. So think from a business point of view also, okay? Just to give you that answer. Risk management, let's think about this together. It's just the general process of identifying, analyzing, and mitigating the risk. Ladies and gentlemen, can we type this word together if you don't mind? Can we say mitigating the risk? Can we type it? Mitigating the risk. Can we type that real quick? It's going to be one of the most exciting things I want you to be saying, okay? If you say it, it will make you sound, I know all of us are smart, but it makes you just feel smart, man. Just say it in an interview and say, you know, we want to make sure we also mitigate the risk mitigating the risk. Let's type it together real quick. If you don't mind, can we type it real quick together, everybody? If you don't mind, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, we got this. So I want also to say mitigating the risk. The reason it's important is because many times 
you must make it part of your conversation. It's not just enough to identify, analyze. We also have to mitigate the risk we identify because of what uses identifying the risk, analyzing the risk, if I don't mitigate the risk, it's useless because yes, I know I have a risk, but I'm not fixing the risk or tracking the risk, then it makes no sense really. So we must take it a step further and think of mitigation of the risk. Excellent job folks, love it. All right, let's go to the next one, mitigating con risk management controls. In general, there are some strategies or mechanism in place to mitigate or manage risk in general. Three, I would call out. One, technical controls. For example, we use technology to mitigate risks such as firewalls or encryption. Firewalls help us to prevent malicious actors from coming into our network. Ladies and gentlemen, remember again, the network is just connectivity of multiple devices. Now it has gone crazy because now we have internet of things, which means all our wearable device is on the network, our kids' laptop, their desktop, their tablets, every one of those TVs that are smart TVs are in our network. So it's just crazy right now. So it means we have to have some technology involved. Encryption as we send information back and forth, very important also, right? So that's also equally important. Administrative control, ladies and gentlemen, remember again, you might get over everything, right? You have the best technology, you have the best softwares, you have all this fancy stuff. But guess what, ladies and gentlemen? What about if you forget to do security background check for your contractors? Ah, am I sure the guy or lady I'm giving access to the key to my kingdom is not compromised, he's not a criminal. So I've done everything right, but I forgot administrative control. My HR don't do background check to check for anything. We don't do security awareness training to keep our folks sensitized. Then it's a disaster waiting to happen obviously at that point in time, right? The third one, which is also important, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget this. This is always, we sometimes ignore this. Um, for those of us that remember, there was a an attack that happened. This is national security issue, right? Um, Stuxnet. Stuxnet was a virus that was placed in the Iranian nuclear reactor some years back. Guess what? Somebody went in, installed a flash drive, right? There's rumor that it was the US CIA and Israeli Mossad that participated to do that, right? Let's leave the technicality of it. But the bottom line is that within our own critical infrastructure too, somebody can be compromised and allowed to physically go to your facilities, especially operational technology, manufacturing plants, all of this crazy stuff, right? Put in flash drive and compromise your system. Let's pause. When we say compromise your system, think about it. I'm a pharmaceutical company. We manufacture drugs for oncology patients patients that have cancer. And I changed the code to make the dosage from 500 mg to 50 mg. And it goes to production, it's shipped all over the world, supply chain. Then your patients start dying, only to realize that the 500 mg that you thought it was, was dispensing 50 mg. So can you see the implication on real life? Even though you think it's a manufacturing plant somewhere you don't care about, the implication in real life is that lives can die. Um, people can die, really. It's not, this is no more some cyber, somebody stealing my account. No, lives can be lost as a result of it. Safety is a big deal also in cybersecurity. So we have to think from that point of view. Don't limit it to just thinking, you know, somebody stealing my credit card or those are bad. But even worse is sometimes loss of life. A few weeks ago, if you guys follow the news, some hackers, Israel is one of the best in the world in you know cybersecurity, and some hackers took over, suspected to be you know Iranian, took over their um, public dispensing system for chlorine to their swimming pool. And they told them, this time we are not arming anyone. They would have dispensed excessive chlorine, which would have led to people falling sick, potential loss of life. They did not do it, but they took over their system to potentially do it. So these are some real time risk. So physical security is also important as we are driving at, okay? Very important. So always think about, don't just limit everything to just, oh, technical administrative. 
physical is equally very, very critical, especially from a safety point of view. All right, let's go. Another thing, some of you on the call said, oh, well, we've heard about risk management framework, RMF, you know, some general things we should think about. Number one, um, most times, a lot of folks that use this are uh, in the government sector. So they would talk about categorizing information system, select security controls, implement security controls, asset security control, authorize information system, monitor security controls. For most of us, 80 to 90% of us on this call, that would not be your story because you'll be working with the Fortune 1000 or mid-sized companies that are doing risk assessment. Sometimes we overthink risk assessment. To be honest, most organizations have done this with, people don't overthink it because they just want to quickly find out the top risk within their company, that's all. And honestly, just like you, most of us already know the top risk within our business, right? It's not like anyone is telling you and I something so strange. You already know it. They're just trying to make sure that, okay, guys, are we covering those top risks, okay? All right, let's go. And this is just getting to the details of the actual, what do you do at each one of these phases, categorizing information system, you know, the selection of the security controls, implementing the security control, assessing the controls, authorization of the information system, and monitoring of the security control. I'll leave this, send it as part of the document I've sent to us after the program, just for your personal read, okay? But in general, um, I won't waste too much time on it because the focus is where we're going to in the next two minutes, okay? Risk mitigation, remember, at the end of the day, is the process of reducing the likelihood or impact of a risk. So we have three key things we can think about. Everybody, listen, very straight to the point. We can decide to avoid a risk, all right? Let's avoid it altogether, all right? Yeah, you're talking about um, people having access to my data center, which is where we keep all our computers and our facilities somewhere. What about if we say, well, okay, going forward, we don't have a data center. Okay, that avoids the risk in total because it's not existing again. What about transfer? Most of us remember again, think about it. How do we transfer risk mostly? Top on the list is insurance, right? I'll say, well, I don't want to absorb this risk. If anything happens, I would have my insurance. That's why we all pay for insurance, for our mortgage, for our cars. You say, you know what? I don't want to spend money to repair my car if there's an accident. Screw that. I don't want to do that. I want you all to just push all the risk and liability to a third party. Then we subscribe to this insurance, folks, and that's it. The final one, reduction. A lot of people tend to move towards reduction and say, look, let us find a way to minimize this risk. For example, you can tell me, hey, users that have access to certain system should be restricted. Okay, no problem. Let's make sure only few people have access to that system. So that reduces my risk, right? So that I'm not giving broad access to everybody to have to that particular system. I have just a few people. Then I take it a step further and say, those few people that have access to this system, let us quarterly review their access. Fair point. All right, cool. Let me share my screen. And I want everybody to kind of, let's, let's just, this is our family time, right? Let's just chat and talk about this together. Let me share my screen real quick and brainstorm together and say, okay, what, what do we think? All right, here's the deal. This is the scenario that we are dealing with. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, every one of these scenarios are real life scenarios. They are things people deal with every day, but let's talk about it. Then we we'll work as a team and I'll see where we think. It's a financial institution doing a risk assessment based on the fact they just went mobile. How many of us would agree with me there is a risk if, you, if your bank goes mobile? All right, so let's brainstorm. Let's forget cyber for a second. If today you realize your bank says we are going mobile, can we just type some of the risk? You know, can we type some of the risk? If your bank says, hey, we are going mobile, can we type, somebody said hacking. Data loss. Give me more. I want us to just, I want more. Tell me what is the risk if a bank decides to go mobile today. Tell me some of the risk. A bank decides to go mobile today. What are some of the risks based on that decision? Your bank has decided I'm going mobile today. Phishing, difficulty accessing it. I love this. I love this. I love this, guys. I love this. All right, let's see more. Tell me more. Tell me more, guys. Privilege escalation, data loss, ransom. You guys are just 
true. Amen. Honestly, I can pack shop now and say, let's go. Because you guys are poor access, user interface. This real system availability. Oh. You know, guys, you know, the reason I love stuff like this is it makes me feel good that, you know, all I'm doing is to call your attention to the obvious, to be honest, because that's really everything that is going to be part of what you start seeing right now. Let's go into the details. Now, look at this, everybody. Look at the scenario we have. Let's just talk about the background of what's going on in this world. All right. This is a financial institution. Um, they've gone mobile. Okay. Look at it. They've, they've gone mobile. That's It has its risk, right? You know, it's launching a new mobile application. That's a big one for us. It's going to be on iOS and Android. No child left behind. Everybody's involved in it. The mobile application will allow users to check their account, view transaction, transfer funds, billing. That's a big one, right? These are big deals. It will integrate with backend system. This is pretty much what most banks are doing right now, right? All of us can use our mobile application to do stuff with the banks. So it's a big deal. Look at the executive summary. This is just to our leadership. It's saying, all right, look at the risk identified. You know, look at this, ladies and gentlemen, you should be proud of yourself. Because I didn't show you guys this, and you guys were showing me, telling me this already. You said unauthorized access to customers' account. That's a risk. Malware or virus infection. That's a risk. Data breach. That's a risk. Legal or regulation non-compliance. Can somebody text me some of the things we can think of? Legal non-compliance. Can somebody text? Tell me some things we can experience with this. Legal and non-compliance. Can we think about this together? Tell me some things we can experience here. Can we type? Tell me. Fraud. Yes. GDPR. Who is that GDPR? Give this person. Can we give this guy love? Patrick, let's give him a round of applause. I was looking for that, actually. You guys are also right, but that was awesome. That was a big deal. Think about it. The first thing I want to know is that, hey, do they have a location in Europe? I have to think about that because GDPR kicks in. If they don't, then we're in trouble. If they do, then we're in trouble because it means the regulators will come after us. Sabinoxy can come after us if we, you know, if there's, a, uh, if financially, you know, you don't follow all the SOX guidelines. So there are many regulations that can still come after us, right? It's a big deal. IPA, if you're dealing with healthcare, PCI DSS, if you are dealing with financial institution, in this case, it will be applicable also. So there's a lot of potential regulatory issue that can come up in this scenario. Okay, I agree with you guys. Now look at this, everybody. Let's talk about this for one minute, then we jump into our work. You interview the leadership. Number one, you ask this leadership, they said, well, unauthorized access to customer account. You ask that, okay, look at what the CISO said. CISO means Chief Information Security Officer. He said, the risk is a top concern for us. We have implemented strong authentication and access control. So you brought the question and said, hey, listen, all right, this is a big risk, unauthorized access to customer, but look at the response of the CISO. Okay, fair point. Malware or virus infection, which you guys already said, they said, all right, because a lot of us download stuff, um, you know, my, um, sometimes we go to our parents or our loved ones to visit them, and they are not as savvy as we are with the mobile device, right? They might tell you, hey, could you help me check this thing? I think my phone is acting weird. Can you take a look at it? I realize this is potentially a virus or, you know, so you need to think of antivirus in that case, right? Distributed denial of service attack. Many times when you see this, we're thinking and saying, okay, have you guys implemented a firewall? Listen, everybody, if you're on this call, don't overthink it. Firewall is just saying it's a system out there that makes sure that only appropriate network or information packets comes into your environment, okay? So they build some rules to make sure only the right information or packets can come into your system. So, and the nice thing is that those firewalls are pretty good. Of course, many times they bypass them if you have poorly designed rules, that can happen. So that's what this guy said. Data breach, listen, listen, gentlemen, this is not rocket science. It's a big one because there could be potential data breach. Remember, if you guys remember, there are times people will just, you know, banks will send you an information and say, well, there was a data breach. The question is, listen, folks, what was breached? Did they take my credit card information? Did they take my um, banking details? You want to know what exactly was taken. That's a big deal too. So people probe further to know what was actually taken. So that's another response there. Fraudulent transaction, this is another one. So you're asking specific questions. A lot of you 
already talked about this application downtime of failure, meaning if there's a downtime, remember the implication. Imagine Amazon, the e-commerce site, having a downtime of one hour. Just think about it. Some of you will smile and say, well, boy, I'll be happy because um, maybe my, you know, my family will not have to spend too much or go on Amazon. But that's the reality. These things, if it happens, it can make companies collapse in just one hour. So one hour is enough to collapse an operation at times. It's a big deal. That's what I'm getting to. All right. Then with legal, in legal case, think about, ladies and gentlemen, what we're thinking about is general counsel. General counsel would be like the top lawyer of the organization, right? So they are the ones that always check this regulation for us to make sure are we in compliance of this regulation. They are constantly helping us to prevent us from trouble. Okay. Then testing. Again, think about it because we're talking about mobile application in this case, right? Did they test this mobile application adequately? All right. So this is their response. Okay. So now let's jump into the weeds for us, ladies and gentlemen. This is where we come in. All right. I'll do the first one with us. Then you guys can tell me what you guys think afterwards. Let's take the first one. I, I want us to tell me what we should do here. This is my own talk. Doesn't mean it's right or wrong. Unauthorized access to customers' account. What is the potential implication on this? Can you guys tell me what you guys think? Unauthorized access to customer account. What do you think is the potential likelihood of that happening? I mean, what do you guys think? Somebody said I. Okay, I'll take I too. I would agree with I. What about the impact? What will be the impact? If somebody unauthorized it, I agree 100%. What about the severity? Boy, if you have access to me, it's no more I, it's critical. That's to me, I think it's critical. The severity, this is severe for me. All right, so we did this together. All right, so we're good with this together. All right. So what I want us to do is that I'm going to put us as a, as a group. Don't overthink it. Don't fight. Don't debate. Over debate. Just think and just relax and just quickly ask each other, hey, what do you think? Likelihood, impact, severity, and feel this information. The next one, which we'll do after we do that, is simple. Based on this information we filled up here, on the aggregate, tell me what you think. For example, if you guys see, security appeared three times here, right? Denial of service, data breach, they're under security. You make a judgment call and say, on the aggregate, what are the security risks, the impact, then the overall risk in general? I will tell you what I think. It doesn't mean it's right or wrong. You guys can decide. I think here is high. I think the impact is high in general security, and I think overall is critical. That's my own personal thought, okay? So I'm gonna send this to us in the group again real quick. Then you guys will work as a team and fill the rest up real quick, all right? That's gonna be our action item. Everyone should make sure you feel it, listening, see the thought process around the group discussion. Then afterwards, everybody on this call, I want you to put your name in front of the report, register on our site and submit it as an assignment. Once you submit it, it will allow you to get certificate of attending this program. It's come with some good perks. You can always claim that you've done risk assessment and you attended our academy to do that, which is great, really. So um, let me share that with us real quick. And we're gonna be in a group of, we're gonna create six group real quick. And please in the group, don't overthink it. Don't bill out of the class. This is too important, ladies and gentlemen. Please make sure you participate. This is the most important piece of it all. Take it anywhere in the world, guarantee I'll tell you, these are the thought process of risk assessment, guaranteed, all right? So this is the this is the meat, this is your work. This is, um, own this. After you work together as a group, go back and now fill the information you discuss as a group, make it your own, be proud of it, and talk through this in an interview. I bet you this is the way it's done, all right? Own it, that's the key. I need ownership. All right, welcome to the real world, folks. Um, I'm glad you all survived this. Um, you guys didn't fight each other. Uh, <laughs> let me pretend we do not. You know, listen, gentlemen, this is the reality, really. This is gonna be our normal. We're gonna argue, debate. And if you notice when I started, I told you guys that one of the ways I do it is I respond ahead of time, what I think, then I take it to the team and say, if you have objection, you can send it to me to you know, um, make changes, right, with your justification. Because if you allow people to talk 
for people because I've learned from my mistake in the past, we could do risk assessment for sometimes two months of following up, following up, following up. Then you realize, wait a minute, I enter a minute meeting that is supposed to be one hour, and I leave there drained and realize I've never even filled more than one form, one line. You know, so it's really crazy. So um, be a good moderator, be respectful. We are going to disagree a lot. It's part of this is the normal process, okay? So don't think you're um, you are different that, oh, you guys always, it's normal, okay? Awesome to everybody. Now, if you're on this call, remember this. What you just did right now is performing a risk assessment. Take ownership of it. That's all I ask you. If you have an interview, speak about this scenario. Honestly, I don't see why, how they would not be attracted to you in an interview. It's not possible because this is it. This is real life. This is, this is what people do. This is what a bank would do if they are bringing out a mobile application. And I know for a fact because I was a product manager myself in my whole world. You have to do a risk assessment of your product. There's no shortcut around it, except you're not a serious minded business. There's no shortcut around it, okay? So excellent job, excellent job, guys. And you know, um, one of the things I'm gonna, if you guys don't mind, I'm gonna send right now real quick. Um, let me ask, if anyone thinks, I, I needed to give a thumbs up if you feel, you know what, you can do a risk assessment now. Of course, don't overthink it. Over time, if it's a longer project, it will take more time. But honestly, this is the foundation of, this is what you'll be doing, really. It might just be multiple meetings, right, with people. That's the only difference. In our case, we cheated, right? It's a short program. You did it for like risk assessment for 20 minutes or 30 minutes. But the truth is that if you can do risk assessment for five variables, you can do it for 20 variables. So give me thumbs up if you feel you get it, you know what risk assessment is all about. I don't care. I just want you to be able to talk about this in an interview. That's all. If you can speak about this in an interview, it's impossible not to be attracted to you based on this conversation. Just tell them, this is a scenario of risk assessment you did. Go through the same exercise you did today. The beauty of what you have in that document is that's a living document you can customize for yourself, own it, play around it, and enjoy it. Um, what we like to do is, you know, most of you know, main program is kicking off next weekend. The cyber GRC class, it's going to be a lot of fun stuff, folks. You think this is fun. You've not seen nothing. This is the tip of the iceberg. Nothing. This is a child's place. Forget it. Um, it's going to be exciting. A lot of good stuff. You'll leave here with solid hands on knowledge of things you can do, all right, in real time. And we have some of our um, team members that just got opportunities. In the last few, um, I think I have two or three of them on the call. I'd like them to talk about their experience. They finished the program three weeks ago. Now they got offers. Let's start with Paul. Paul, can you give me your hands real quick? Um, if you don't mind, can you just raise your hand so I can make you just talk a little bit? Then I'll talk, wrap it up with a few comments. And um, Paul, if you don't mind, then also I sent our YouTube page. If you've not joined our YouTube, just like it so that you can get information and just enjoy the experience with those folks. Paul, okay, excellent. Paul is just an amazing, crazy ad worker, right? Listen, Paul's story is crazy, right? He has two of us after finishing two weeks ago, right? Now, not everybody will be like this. So full disclosure, don't say, oh boy, I want to, I'm getting too over. We don't play that game here. You put the work, you put the discipline, hold us accountable, we do the same thing, and good things always show up. Paul, let me add it over to you. Then while Paul is doing that, um, Larry and Abby are on the call, please be ready to speak. And every one of these folks, they finished the program three weeks ago, right? But they are ad workers, they put the time, they put the work, and I'm proud of their success. Paul, over to you, please. All right, thank you very much. <clears throat> so hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Paul Johnson. I, <clears throat> I, uh, I don't have a background in IT coming into this. So I was in a position where, um, just like most people, I was trying to find um, a way to break through into the, the IT and cybersecurity space. Um, so this was, and funny enough, I actually knew about this opportunity like a while back, but I was kind of delaying and taking the time overthinking it. Uh, but you you guys, a lot of you that are deciding to start this course, you the hardest part is just getting started. Once you actually get started, you realize that um, even though the, the work may look scary from the outside, once you actually get into it, you do the work, you you attend the, the sessions and, and do um 
the 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 different sessions breakout sessions that added with some studying that you do on your own time you realize that you you are fully capable of doing that there's a lot of people uh in cybersecurity in in different IT risk management spaces today that are just like you in fact they're not you they're not even as qualified as you they're not necessarily as detail oriented as you but they're doing it because they took the chance on themselves and and uh, gave themselves a chance so i was i was lucky enough to give myself um, the opportunity to take this program. I completed the program, like you said, a couple of weeks ago. And from the last week of the program, once I knew enough um, to start applying for jobs, that's all I did. Every day, I, I built my resume, uh, two different resumes to to kind of align with what types of roles I want to apply for. Um, whether it's a, a general GRC analyst or applying for a third party risk analyst, I made sure that I tailored my resume to that specific role. And every every week, I'm consistently applying to different jobs. I had a ton of uh, jobs that either did not respond to me or some that responded to me and told me that um, they, they decided to go in a different direction with somebody else. But that's fine. Um, it's a numbers game at the end of the day. You have to apply to a lot of people um, and then filter from that. Eventually, I was able to hear back from a few uh, employers. I was able to have, have a couple of interviews and... Um, this past week, I got two job offers. Uh, I decided to to choose the one that had uh, the better compensation packet for me. And I will be, uh, I know some of you are, are looking for more remote roles. Those are available as well. Personally, since I am someone that I don't have a family, it's just me. I, I live alone. So like, it's easy for me to relocate. So this job offers a, a really good compensation packet. And then um, I accepted the role as a third party risk analyst moving to Oklahoma City to begin April 24th. Um, the biggest things that I would advise people is to uh, make sure that you put put in some work on your resume. Your resume tells your story before you even do, right? So make sure that you put it, take the time to actually uh, ensure that your resume, even if you're not in the room, your resume will speak for you. That's one. Secondly, um, do the work. There's there's nothing good that comes easy. You have to actually put in over time, at least devote an hour a day of just uh, whatever your favorite way of studying, whether it's reading or watching a podcast, uh, listening to podcasts or watching YouTube videos, devote that time, put in the work, do the labs, um, save the documents that you think will help you. And then the last one for me is a lot of people struggle with the, with the job application and interview process. When you get to that part of it, make sure that you have full confidence in yourself. Like um, a lot of us, like we really doubt ourselves, we underestimate ourselves. There's no time for that. You have to believe in yourself that you're fully capable of doing it. When you go into interviews, you have to go with the utmost confidence. And remember that the people that are interviewing you, they're not some superhuman people. They're just people just like you. Uh, they, you're just as capable of doing the things that they're doing. So just relate to them in a human way, build that human connection. Uh, don't underestimate the human element when you sit down to talk to people for an interview. But there's, there's, you have a lot of potential, and uh, this course can unlock a lot of that potential for you that will guide you in the right direction. And so I wish you guys all the best, but that has been my story. I hope even if one person is encouraged by that and is able to put in the work and, and better their life, uh, I, I, I will be very happy. But um, the next month or so of this course is very significant, and it, will, it, it can be very life-changing. So I encourage you to put in the time and the work. Thank you so much, Paul. Can we give it up for Paul? Let's give some icon of love. Let's just appreciate him. That's amazing. You know, one thing I always throw out there, we don't play games here. We're not magicians. You put in the work, honestly, great things always happen. I know for a fact. Um, we're not of the illusion that we do something tomorrow, it just works. Put the work, have faith, believe in yourself, renew your mind, make your mind right. Great things always happen. Put the work. I mean, we don't play games here, man. We are full leaders there. We are very focused. We don't just play games. Just put the work, be disciplined, be dedicated, um, show excellence in everything you do, and it will be noticed. All right, let's take one, uh, one more person. Abby, please, over to you. Paul, thank you, brother. You're awesome, man. So proud of you, man. Um, Abby, over to you, sir. One, this is Abiodun speaking. Um, I attended Atkins class for the GRC program. Um, a little bit about my background. Uh, I come from an accounting and finance background. I did that for over um, like 12, 12 years now. Um, so I've always been interested in the IT side. I've done a little bit of everything in accounting, um, financial accounting, financial auditing. And I just decided during the pandemic that, you know what, let me try something new. Um, so I signed up for the class. I dedicated the time and the energy to the class. And my own approach was a little bit different 
um, I took my time, created my own resume. I applied for selected positions that um, for me, I wanted a remote position just to align with my current lifestyle. Um, and I was able to secure employment in that. The only word of advice I would give folks is even if you don't have an IT background, put in the time. I can structure this class in a way where if you if you want to learn some te uh, terminologies in I um, IT, he has a he has a, a on his website he has that for you. That way you can familiar familiarize yourself with basic terminology. Dedicate the time, put in the effort. Um, that is what is needed. Whatever groups that you you are assigned to. Um, do the labs, interact with your group mates because they will come in handy if they have to reference you or if you have to talk to somebody who has already had like interview interviews and uh, you can ask them more questions, Q&As and things of that nature. But you need to put in the time. Um, if you are not, you, if you are not going to dedicate the time and effort, you are not going to see results. So please put in the time, ask a bunch of questions or put in the time. Thank you. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, let's get up for Abby. Thank you, brother. I mean, listen, listen man. Um, we are hard workers here. We don't play games. If you don't put the work, I'll be straight and honest with you, then good things hardly show up if you don't put the time. We're not magician here. We don't play games at all, really. We are here to build leaders, and we're going to push you hard. I'm here to protect your dream, your God-given dream. Mine is to be a little footnote in your story of success, right? I'm just... That's all. I'm just honored and proud to be part of your story. Go and shine. You have the capacity. You have what it takes. Don't underestimate yourself. One of my favorite words, like, let's type this together, everybody. Say we don't shrink for anyone. Let's type real quick. We don't shrink for anybody. Let's go. Let's go, everybody. Can we type that together real quick? We don't shrink. Never, never shrink for anybody. We don't shrink. Let's type it together if you don't mind. We don't just shrink. It doesn't matter who it is. I don't care who you are, what you are. You know, we respect you. But we're not going to shrink for you, okay? Put yourself, put the work, put the time, put the discipline and the focus. Larry, are you on the call? And every one of these folks are recent folks that we just um, um, had some exciting part together and their yeah, success story makes us so happy and honored, really. If you are here, give me a thumbs up. And before we wrap up, I'll just quickly give some quickly rundown of frequently asked questions and answers that a lot of you have asked me. Please join our YouTube page. Um, a lot of you have asked about the program, and I'll quickly share my screen real quick. We'll run that in the next two, three minutes. Um, just to prepare you, give us four, four minutes after, you know, we'll be out of here five minutes after the pro after the hour, and um, you all can enjoy the rest of the weekend. And let me quickly just run through this real quick. Some frequently asked questions we've had. A lot of you have reached out to me one-on-one -on, -one on some of these questions, but it's easy to just do it one time. And if you still have questions, that's okay. Ping me one-on-one. -on -one. We can always work together. All right. Is there programming required? A lot of you have asked me. Nope, 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 nope. Don't worry. No programming required. <laughs> you don't need to be a smart programmer. You know, like Paul said, he's not really a core IT person himself. Um, do I need to be a US citizen to get into this field? No, but you need to be a resident or you should have work authorization, which is expected anyway. Um, do I, I don't have IT background? No problem. Just go through our basic IT class, which we have on academic.skillwe.com. Do we help with resume? The answer is yes, we do. Um, we help you to carve out a part on how to build a resume. I have a video specifically for that. I can send draft out, which I've done in the past. The challenge of time is that I don't want everybody to use the same draft because there are other smart ways of doing it now. A lot of us know about chat GPT. If you don't, go to our website, you see all that information there. Um, do you need to commit time to be successful? Yes. My challenge to you is, listen, this is 30 days of a program, right? Have fun. Treat yourself. You've taken care of everybody else. It's your time to treat yourself and have fun. Make it a time to just upskill professionally and fine tune yourself to be a better professional. 30 days can change your life professional forever. And, you know, not just me saying it, Paul, Larry, Abby, a lot of other folks within the last few weeks alone, which is great. Um, what kind of computer? Mac, Windows is fine. Um, sites to apply for job. Indeed, LinkedIn, any of those sites are good for job. What kind of role can you apply for after a program? We've seen people get job as NIST auditor, IT risk analyst, data privacy analyst, third party risk analyst, GRC analyst, a lot of roles around that too. Um, do I need that experience to begin my career? No, you don't, but definitely take all the basic foundational class, very important. Does this role require some meetings? Yes, sometimes you have to, and that's why the collaborative side of it, we made all of us collaborate so that we can know that this is a good program 
to collaborate and um, lend that style, be engaged. It's okay within our program, make mistakes, say things that might be weird. It's okay within ourselves. It's a space, safe space for us at the minimum. Is certification required? This is a very popular question. The answer is no. But we would put the certification there and put in bracket in view, meaning we are working towards it. GRCP is a good one, I think. And I was one of the board to review their current material um, at the moment. My role in my current organization, you know, is a leadership role. So I was one of the volunteers to help them to build their curriculum. So I support that organization. It's a pretty good one, GRCP. And I can give you guys more insight. Um, we have some past questions you can leverage for GRCP, which is pretty cool. Um, let's see. The class schedule, this class begins next week, and this is the schedule. I'll share it in the large, uh, in the WhatsApp group. If you're not in that WhatsApp group, make sure you join it so that we can give you information to keep you up to date. Week one, week two, week three, week four, four weeks of potential life transformational experience for you. Take a chance on it. I think it's worth it. Um, what is the cost? A common question, $750 for the cost. Do we have payment plan? Yes, you can go to the website. You can pay twice or three times. It has in, um, additional installment fee for doing that. So you can go to the website to do that. Um, interesting data. Very soon, if you remember, Paul mentioned that a lot of people, it's a number game. If you're part of my program, you realize we say one thing very important to us. No matter how smart you and I are, you will get a lot of no. No is okay. We love no's here, right? Don't sweat it. We don't care about no's here. In our environment here, no means next opportunity. So don't sweat it. Don't, don't go crazy. That Don't get emotional. Don't let me play Dr. Phil on you and start raising your morale back. No, it's okay. Not a big deal. And, you know, that reminds me, and one of the things I do a lot is I like to work on our mind in terms of let's work on our mind, read books, um, challenge yourself, build yourself. I'll send a link right now. It's a group we have where we read, we share book of the week. It's a way to enlarge your mind. Everything starts with the mind. You see me talk around this, not because I just care to speak on, but I know if I can get your mind to think right, most likely I can get you to act and execute right. So it's a mind game. You must believe in yourself. If you don't, nobody else will. And honestly, you only have one life. Maximize it. Why not? Why not you? There's no reason. There's no reason I tell you. You know, um, time is not going. You and I are going. Go with a bang, guy. Let's go. Maximize your life, um, God-given potential. And I genuinely, that's our live mission here. All right. No IT experience. Go to academy.skillwiz.com. What are people saying? They've said it all. That's For the first 50 people that registered, we have three, four books we have in our Top five, we are so proud of those. One is risk assessment, some guide, best practices, questions and answer, guide to IT general controls, third party risk management. These are huge gold mine. Took me a while to take time to structure the writing. For our first 50 registered folks, some of you registered already. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to send the book to you as a thank you. And those books are gold mine you can use for your interview preparation, take notes on it, highlighters on it, and have fun doing it. So for our first 50, definitely I'm going to send a copy of it. For other people, the book is on Amazon. I'll send the link. You can go ahead and get those books too. Um, go to our YouTube page. Please, it's an asset for us. Go to those YouTube page. You'll see a lot of good stuff, good materials out there that will value to you for sure. All right. So that is really the summary. Once again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a honor and a privilege to be part of your story. And all we can say is that you're one of the crazy ones in a good way. It takes someone crazy to spend their weekend to say they want to spend it and add value to themselves. And I'm honored to be your instructor, honored to be part of your story. All we need is to be a footnote in your story of greatness. And above all, I wish you Godspeed. And I will send the link to everybody right now, the link for... Um, the YouTube page for registration, everything I think might be useful. Let me send it right now. A lot of you are pinging me to say, um, can you send me the link and all that? Let me send it and I'll hang, it, hang out here for with you guys for the next two minutes. Um, please, all the link, at the minimum, I need you to join the WhatsApp group. Please make sure you do because I can share information there. And just to give you a so please, before you go one more thing, don't forget, we will never ping you one-on-one -on -one to give you a code, 
a lot of fraudulent people out there. Make sure you don't fall victim. It's everywhere. But that's our new normal. And I wish you God to be. Thank you all. It's been a privilege. I can go back film right here. Have the best week ever. Thank you so much, everybody. You guys are awesome. Thank you all. See you all next week in the class. Thank you. <laughs>